I just want to share with you something I had to do recently for a good friend of mine. He was looking to buy a Range Rover. This was going on for a long time. I was like, man, you have to get a Range Rover. You have to get a Range Rover. And he used to just laugh at me when I used to say how great they were, even when they broke. And then eventually he was like, um, I have to get a Range Rover. Um, I really like those Range Rover Vogues, he called them. I'm like, no, no, that's just a model line. And he's like, well, I, I want one of them. I want one of the older ones um, between 0 2 and 2011 2012 now his problem was he actually didn't know anything about them he wasn't sure which one to go for uh, he like he could have went and spent six thousand pounds on a zero three td6 like or he could have spent like he did seven and a half thousand pounds on a 2010 2011 4.4 tdv8 now to be fair, I think the Range Rover, that particular model, the L322, represents tremendous value for the buyer on the secondhand market. So the first things first, let's look at the older Range Rovers. Let's look at the old Range Rover TD6, okay? Now, straight away, what jumps up here, okay? We have a 2006 TD6 for £2,000. Let's have a look at this vehicle, right? It's not washed. Interior looks good. Rear headrests, like, you know, rear side entertainment. Side steps, a bit damaged. They rust. They're not expensive to replace. Personally, I just take them off. Um, and I take off this mud flap as well if I've done that. Let me see here. Now, the front, it is the facelift. It looks fine. The headlamps might need polished a bit. Mm, a little bit of trim just needs tidied up a bit. But, yeah, wiper needs fixed. So, this isn't, like, a perfect example. And there's a spare wheel sitting above the spare wheel holder. Um, and it also is the older TD6 model. Now, the engines in this are bulletproof. These cars, the engines are absolutely bulletproof. What is not bulletproof is the gearbox, okay? They generally fail, right? And with the older ones, when the gearbox fails, like it's probably not worth fixing unless you can just get a secondhand gearbox to throw it in and wait till it fails, right? Now, the first Range Rover l322 that i drove was a td6 and it wasn't fast but by god it was a great tow vehicle it was really comfortable it was good off-road and i think if i needed a cheap cheap runaround i would not be afraid of a td6 right now as i said this is a facelift and one way you can quickly know that is by the headlamps the tailgate uh, rear lights and actually just noticing that there see there's a bit of rust these tailgates are rusting as well uh, it affects the newer ones such as this facelift onwards much more than affects the 0203 right my own tailgate is rest, rusting on my tdv8 at the moment and um, although it's not near as bad as that but you'll also notice just a way to spot the facelift is it has the logic 7 um sound system Okay, which is actually really, really good to be fair. Um, and you'll spot that, right? But sometimes they do have the interior facelift like with the Logic 7 and all that, but they do have the older square headlamps. I think the older ones with the square headlamps, they're really going to you know become collector's items. Like I had a tidy one or two of them and I sold them a few years ago. You know, I kind of wish I held on to them. But these ones here, I don't think these will become collectors. I think they're, they're not going to. And certainly this one's a little bit rough, right? But still, I think really good value for money. But let's have a look here. What else is around, right? So this is a older one. It's pre-facelift, which I think looks really well. But you'll notice this is a HSE, right? Which stands for High Specification Edition, but it's not. You want a minimum of Vogue, I think, to be honest. One way you can quickly tell is the seats, okay? And they stopped selling this model in the UK in... I think it was 0506 and Vogue was the minimum spec, right? And um, you can see those seats there, they're not near as comfortable, right? The Vogue have much nicer seats, but still 720 pounds, you know, cheap tow vehicle. There it is, right? Um, I just want to show you a Vogue 2002 T6. This is just one I've quickly looked at, like a thousand pounds, right? Look at that, right? Notice the seats. That's Vogue. They're just they're a lot more adjustable. I, I I don't know what the exact, um, you know, number of adjustments there's in them, but they're a lot more than the HSE, right? Now, it's actually worth pointing out as well. They tend to rust here. Now, people are able to get that fixed fairly reasonable, but you just want to watch out for that, okay? And the Vogue also has rear seat heating, 
which the HZ doesn't. Okay, a few common faults. These dashes, the pixels stop working. Again, it doesn't really bother me. And um, sometimes you just can't see the mileage and stuff, but yeah, it's it's fine. And if it's not a facelift, it has the older M sound system, which isn't Logic 7, but it's still fine. Still has a key steering wheel, still a really comfortable car. Now this one here, like, look, it's really rough. The bonnet is up, like, come on. And um, that is just terrible, but like, they're lovely cars. Like, look at that leather, like, look at that, like, amazing. Just, oh, unbelievable value for money and just for towing and just for, it brings me back, even just looking into the, into that interior, right? So this is up to around 2005, right? Maybe 2004. TD6, preface left, right? Let's just try... So the TD6, yeah, 2006, it kind of stopped, right? And then it moved into the TDV8. So let me look up Range Rover 3.6 TDV8. Right? Let's have a look at them, right? Now, this is what I'm using at the moment, right? Again, these have become really, really low cost at the moment, right? Now, I don't... I'm not going to count the Sport, right? That's a Sport. I'm going to look at the proper Range Rover that's, because that's what we're looking at here, right? And let's just click on this one here now. I'm picking a lot of the lower, lower price ones, so... Some of them just aren't in great shape, but let's have a look. Yeah, a wee bit rough there. The parking sensor is missing and the bumper has a little scratch on it. But yeah, yeah, it's a rough car. Has tow bar, badly rusting. Um, again, you can see it there. Yeah, overall, that's just a, that's a rough car. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't buy that one, right? You know, it's low enough mileage, but I just wouldn't buy it, right? So let's just go back here. Let's see if we find a nice one that I'd recommend buying, right? That one's nice, but just a bit high for a 3.6. I want to get a 4.4 for that. Um, here's two, right? Let's just open these two and let's have a look, right? Okay, this is £3,000. Very reasonable. Looks to be in good shape. Tidy. Around the back is nice. It's a HSE, right? Okay, so straight away, seats are nice. In the previous one, the seats were nicer. These are cheaper leather. I don't think they've rear-heated seats. Just not as nice. Um, still a good car, though. But I wouldn't probably buy that one just for that reason. Let's have a look at this one here. This one looks nice. Vogue SE. Brilliant. Okay. Really nice leather. Um, like They're nice seats. Um, rear seat entertainment. Um, you also notice, like, because of Vogue SE, you've got different audio inputs there. Um, you can see them there. Again, you've got heated and cool seats in the front, which you don't get. You have heated seats in the front in the Vogue, but the Vogue SE comes with heated and cooled, um, which again is just well worth having um, in the real hot summer's days. And um, you have a TV as well, actually, but no one really uses that anymore. Logic 7, again, that's pretty standard. That there is a nice vehicle, right? Let's see how much that is. Like, never, if you want to, like, a affordable towing vehicle or just a winty winter winty winter daily or you just want a nice car to drive all the time like three thousand eight hundred fifty pounds you probably get that for three and a half you know near enough what amazing value for money right again i think the 3.6 is you know a nice sweet spot right but let's look at the one i recommended him to buy right range over tv8 l322 right let's have a look at this Okay, let me see, Range Rover, 4.4 TDP8, right? This is the model that I actually recommended him to buy, right? Um, and not because I think it's the best Range Rover ever. I I don't. I'd probably, I think the 3.6 3 wins that. Not on performance, even though it's not bad. Just I feel, I feel they're a great all-rounder. Um, I think the 4.4, there's a little bit more to go wrong. Um, in terms of if something breaks, it's more expensive to fix. Whereas the 3.6, I think, is more lower cost if you want to fix it yourself. Like even just the air springs. Um, there's a sensor in the 4.4. just costs a lot more to get the air spring to with that sensor, you know? But still, I think the 4.4 is much nicer to drive. So let's have a look here um, at these two here. Because it's just a lot more power. Um, okay. This one here, quite clean. A little bit more blingy than the 3.6 TDV8. But let's have a look around it. Something's different there. See that tailgate? They're new. That's new lettering. And that would annoy me. I wouldn't buy that because of that. 
Um, let's see the inside. The inside's really tidy. It does have heated and cooled seats. Um, it looks clean, but I'd be wondering why that lettering is not right. So let's have a look at this other one here. It's 11,000 pounds, right? That's a nice color. Mm. I'm just not sure about that car. Something just seems funny about it. Let's look at this one here. And again, I don't really worry too much about mileage. But that one, see, look at that. Look at the look at the lettering on that. It's just spaced correctly, and that makes a huge difference. Nice tow bar, really nice side steps, not many dents. Cream is a hard color to keep. Um, I prefer black. I think it's easier kept. But overall, that's a really nice car. Notice it has the digital dash, whereas the ones previous to this didn't. Very nice. It's also worth pointing out some of the late 3.6 did have a digital, digital dash, but they would have had the traditional... Um, gear transmission lever here not this rotary knob um but if we look at these right seven five hundred forty six thousand miles amazing value so i really quickly ran through the kind of market and what i'd be looking at in terms of three different types of range rovers so you got like the pre facelift t6s so with the you know no logic seven much more simple technology then you move up to the Logic 7 and um, just, you know, interior facelift and, you know, newer headlamps and a few different wee things like that. You got that. Okay. But I kind of group them all together at this stage. I don't really view them any differently. Okay. They're in my mind, they're all TD6s and they're good, but I wouldn't want to be paying more than two, two and a half thousand pounds for one. Right. And I would bear in mind the gearbox will likely fail. And their performance is not going to be huge, but it will tow anything you want and do it in comfort, right? Then we come to the 3.6, as I said, they, I feel, represent great value. I'd be kind of looking at between four and five thousand pounds for a really tidy example. That's kind of what I want to spend on one of them. Even maybe three to five, like that. That's kind of it, right? I wouldn't want to be going any lower than that, because I think you're just going to end up spending that money that you've saved on the purchase price on repairs, right? So that's what I'll be looking at for them, right? Then if it's a 4.4 TDV8, you know, 6,000 pounds up, you know, seven to eight, you've got some lovely vehicles. Like he paid seven and a half thousand pounds for his and it only had a hundred and I think 20,000 miles on it. Absolutely amazing. And he loves it. He's telling me like this car, you haven't seen this car. It's amazing, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I have seen them. I have driven them. They're great. Um. But I did warn him. I says to him, if you buy this car, I says, you will always have a Range Rover in your drive, no matter what. You just, it's just, it's like a, I don't know, an addiction or something. Once you get it, it's very hard to get rid of. You'll always want it, no matter if it, it's so reliable for you or so unreliable, you'll still always come back. Um, and he's a fan now, 100%. But um, I just want to create this video because there's so many people that don't know the difference between these vehicles and you know, you're on eBay, you're browsing like I am there now and you're looking at all these cars and you're like, what am I looking at? Well, I hope you now understand what you are looking at and what you should kind of be spending. Um, as of right now, we're in January 2024. All right. If you enjoyed this video, please hit subscribe. Please leave me a question down in the comments if you're anything you're not sure about. And I'll do my best to help. If you're, um, if you purchase one of these vehicles, let me know. Um, how has your experience been so far? And, um, Thank you for watching the channel and uh, thank you for being part of the community. All right, take care.